Hey everybody, how's it going? Doug here. I just wanted to show you my ball python room and a few ball pythons that I have. Not a whole lot right now, but I do have three females that I am going to eventually breed. Uh, this room is in my basement of the duplex I'm renting. And I had to patch up a little spot over there in the wall. Uh, I had to put a door in. This room was already built when I was, before I moved in, uh, but the door entranceway area was empty. I had to put a door in myself. And then I threw up the fluorescent lighting in here. So, got fluorescent lighting going up in the ceiling. All the wiring for that goes all the way over to this surge protector I got from Home Depot. Only costs about $15 or $20 for this. It has a timer on it, so at 7 o'clock in the morning, I have it so the lights turn on. And then at 7 o'clock at night, the lights turn off all by this timer on this surge protector. Mainly because I, I'm not using the light for breeding purposes yet, so I'm not minimizing or prolonging the daytime or the daylight that they get. Just having it so there is some light. I have a Lasco heater down here for heating the room. It is in the basement, so the whole rest of the basement is kind of cool. So I want to keep this room nice and warm at about 80 degrees. So that way if something does happen with the herp stat that I have run in the rack, that at least it's still going to be about 80 degrees in here. Nothing too bad hasn't happened to the snakes. I have a little work table there. I take pictures of the snakes on there for whatever. Eventually you can have a website up because once I start breeding the ball pythons, I'm gonna sell some of the babies and everything. I have a little scale here for weighing them. Uh, the essential trash can for throwing crap away. Um, some odds and ends down there. I threw down some rugs because this was like concrete floor so I threw down the rugs to keep some of the heat in here otherwise the concrete floor is a little cool and have a herbstat 2 running this rack uh, the shelves on the rack have a little groove that goes down the center to about there and you can put the probe in there from the herbstat it sits right in the groove so that way you can slide your your bins in and out without messing with the probe at all. And this rack is built by Animal Plastics. And this is the Iris CB70. I have dual side radiant heat. So the on the sides in the back area of the rack have the heat tape on that side and on the other side. And then for the actual bins themselves, I actually have little cards on here that I printed off from a Viper Reptile Tracking System. They kind of neat. They're kind of neat. They have your reptile ID. I just labeled all of mine based off of whatever morph they are and what year they were born. It has the sex on there. And you can put a little picture of each of your snakes on there. Took my picture right there on that table and put them on this card. For the reptile ID, I, like I said, I just put the morph down and then the year and then the number. So if I had three bumblebees, I'd have bumblebee 0901, 0902, 0903. And like if I had a couple butters, let's say I would just say butter 0901, and then the next one would be butter 0902. So I know I kind of lame right now. I don't really need to have this. It's not like I have a lot of animals. I can't keep track of them or anything or whatever. But in the future, it'll be beneficial when I have a whole bunch of little babies all over the place and didn't know what I need to have for selling and all that kind of stuff. So right now it's pointless, but it looks neat. Plus my relatives are all afraid of snakes, it seems like. So... If they get over here and they don't want me to open the actual bin up, I might just have to be like, well, I'll look at the picture then. And they can say, wow, it looks cool. But 
I don't know. Let's see how well this goes over. It was from a 30 day free trial thing and it's pretty neat though. You can write your notes on there for for like when they feed and stuff like that and for any breeding data. Um, getting on to the actual snakes themselves. This first one is the bumblebee. My first ball python that I had ever owned right here. This snake was hatched out on October 6th from Garrick DeMeyer over at Royal Constrictor Designs. I weighed her on Tuesday and she weighed 87 grams. Uh, yesterday I fed her a hopper mice and today I didn't videotape it is, so if it kind of gives you an idea she probably weighs a little bit more than 87 grams now being that there's mice in her. And she is a really, really nice snake. I already did a YouTube video on her once. And just kind of a description type thing. And showing you what she all looks like up close and everything. Me holding her and all that kind of stuff. But she has really nice yellow. Not a lot of flecking, but she's got some. I mean, it's going to get more and more as she gets older probably. Uh, she's got some nice high whites. Nice. I like her black pattern. Her black webbing pattern and stuff, and then her head I like. A lot of bumblebees' heads look cool and unique. This one I like a lot. It kind of has like an X on the forehead. Pretty cool. Love the snake. That was my bumblebee. Now for the butter. Here is the butter. This one I also got from Garrick over at Royal Constructor Designs. This one right here I got recently along with the Pied. This one was hatched out on September 16th. When I weighed her on Tuesday, she weighed 84 grams. And she also ate yesterday. So she probably weighs a little bit more than that now. Really nice blushing and the brown on the back there. With her, obviously, she has the golden butter patches or pattern area. Nice white fade going up there. Pretty nice looking butter. This camera's not really doing as much justice as it should, though. It, she's got a lot more yellow or gold color on her patches. I don't know if it's the light I'm in or what, but pretty nice snake. And finally, moving on to everyone's favorite that's seen it so far out of all three of my snakes, the Pied. She looks pretty cool. She has about 60 to 70 percent pattern and about 30 to 40 percent white. So it's kind of half and half, a little over half and of one and over the other, but some people like a lot of white and their pied. Some people like a lot of pattern. I like a good mixture of both. So that's why I thought this would be a nice one to have. Quite a start to the collection. Somebody commented on me having a pied, a butter, and a bumblebee for starting my collection. And now nah, people do that, I guess. But uh, I had some extra student loan money to throw around. And I figured I might as well spend it on something that I'm really going to want. This snake was hatched out on October 29th, by the way. From Garrick over at Royal Constrictor Designs. And weighed her on Tuesday. And she weighed... 84 grams, same as the butter. So again, this one ate already two yesterday, so it's gonna weigh a little bit more. And all three of these females are gonna get bred by a male lemon blast that I hope to pick up next year from Garrick. And can't wait to see what turns out with the babies and those. Keep posted, I'm gonna have some more videos. I'm gonna do a separate video on the butter and a separate video on the pied. And I'll have them posted up pretty soon. Subscribe 
and watch more of my videos. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hey everybody, this is Doug with Hissy Fit Reptiles doing a Hissy Fit Reptiles room tour. So, showing you guys uh, it's basically what I have in my room and what how I have it all organized and stuff like that and see what I all got. This is by no means a complete reptile collection. I'm not going to go through everything, but I'll show you guys a good chunk of some stuff. Here, do like a full room pan. Alright, so let's just start out with this area of the room since it's uh, the least impressive. Um, just a uh, it's a rack. I was a storage rack, and I actually made it kind of into a rat thawing rack. So I uh, thaw my rats out there and use the heat lamp and uh, to get the rats up to a temperature. So I, I have this rack on there so it crisscrosses. It's uh, harder for the rats to fall between the cracks then. Uh, my tongs sitting on there. Uh, here's the incubator that I that I made. Basically got that put together. I have two egg boxes in here. There's nothing in there right now. I'm waiting for the pastel hat pied to pied clutch um, to lay, and then I'm waiting for the bumblebee to lemon blast clutch to lay. So I just got the boxes ready though with the vermiculite in there and the water ratio and everything. So um, really nice incubator though. I'm glad that it works because uh, uh, it's always scary. It's kind of throwing an incubator in there and having eggs and not knowing if it works very well or not. And I have a clutch of eggs that hatched perfectly fine, so I'm really happy with the incubator. And uh, now I'm going forward with no worries on that thing. I uh, got the leopard geckos over here in this corner. Uh, most of them are hiding because the the light the lights on. So probably one in there. Yep. Three female leopard geckos. This right here is Ruby. She's a eight and a half, nine foot long red tail boa, and she's about thirty five pounds. She's twelve years old. And she's got a pretty big enclosure. Uh, this is one of those, uh, I don't know store display cage type things and it's got a really heavy heavy um, top on here so she's good to go um, really really nice snake I have another video on her at all yet I just got her f uh, a few months ago and um, did a couple um, presentations and stuff with her and um, really great snake so happy to have her in my uh, my collection of animals here and Bella, we'll get to her a little bit later. Got Buddy over here, chilling his log. If you're wondering, I actually turned all the lights back on because it's actually uh, getting close to nighttime here, so all the lights actually went off. He's shedding skin on his head there too, but he's got some nice greens in there and all that kind of good stuff. Crested geckos, the baby crested geckos. There's one. And the other one's probably, oh, okay, there's the other one. Glass kind of has a uh, water spotting on it and stuff. So, uh, and Bella is in here in the boa file. Kind of hard to see her there. there. I had a light of China on her, but she's doing pretty awesome. I'll do a video on the boas one of these days. Um, got a big tub full of vermiculite. Um, actually, got my little desk stuff. Got like all my cups and stuff in there. Smaller deli cups in there. Some miscellaneous, miscellaneous stuff. Um, 
Damien and the boys, they got uh, a painted turtle in here that they caught and they've been taking care of. So uh, up there it's kind of a mess. Utility tub. Bag stand for dirty towels and stuff. Space heater. Paper towel machine. Garbage can. And then the ball python side. Uh, and the crested gecko. Sorry, there's crested geckos up there too. That's uh, the um, adults. The adult crested geckos, there's one right there. It's the female pinstripe, and right there you can see the male. The male red extreme Harley. And all my crested geckos are for sale. Um, have them up on King Snake and stuff. I'm revamping my website kind of uh, with the store thing. I'm gonna try making it easier for people to get to and stuff. And I got the ball python rack. Uh, some of them don't have the tags, but um, we're working on revamping it because I use this thing called um, ScanYourReptile.com and Reptile Scan. So there's like a little QR code. You scan it with your phone. All the information for that snake comes up. You can enter any type of information you can. Uh, so I have it actually revamped, and I haven't printed the cards out yet, but the, the logo is down farther, and then the QR code is here. And then it's got, you know, all the same information and stuff like that, um, date of birth and everything. Uh, kind of revamped it a little bit, but it's something I kind of threw together based off of other types of card card systems that I liked. So, uh, kind of real quick, throw it in here on some of the snakes. It's here's that clown male. Um, here in the ivory looks nice. Show her off a little bit. The sugar. Yeah, she's a little jumpy. Really nice sugar. Uh, these two right here, actually, I'm holding these for Andrew Witt. He's a buddy of mine. Uh, I'm kind of using them as backups until uh, until he gets these racks. He's actually going to be getting these racks for me, and I'm going to be replacing them with the 30 bin. Um, either a Freedom Breeder 30 bin um, CB70 rack or a an ARS 30 bin um, CB70 rack. And then here's his Lemon Blast. The other one was a Lesser that he had. It was a really nice Lesser. But here's his Lemon Blast. Really nice Lemon Blast. And as you, um, as you remember too here, I, I'm selling... My pastel pie is sold. That um, that one's going to Matthew Judy. Yeah, nice, nice pastel hat pie to brother him with my my pied. She's gonna be ready to lay here. Um, her due date's technically tomorrow, so don't know if she'll have the eggs ready for tomorrow or not, or if uh, maybe another day or two. This is looking nice right here. Check this out. Bumblebee's got some nice size on her. She'll be going in another week. She'll be laying her eggs. Like glowing. Really awesome. Uh, let me see here. Honeybee. She looks awesome. She's about 22, 2300 grams. Um, which other one is really... That black pastel. She's got... Just extreme blacks on her. Really nice black pastel. The butter. Um, oh yeah, here uh haven't in a haven't shown my albino off in a little while because she's been at Kyle's. Sorry, I'm a little unprepared. Some albino. She's huge. 2400 grams or so. She was at Kyle's. We, we tried breeding her last year and she didn't go. So, uh, one more right there. She's getting back up to size. She's the one that laid the five clutch or five egg clutch with uh, the pastel mystic of Kyle's. 
Um, she um, she's getting back up the size pretty good. Same, same with the Mojave. Mojave's putting on some size again. Ah, screw it. I showed you the MRE the other one, otherwise, I'm going to show you. Spider. Fire. Really nice fire. Some really awesome plans for my females this year, guys, so make sure you're checking out my stuff here and follow me on Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of good stuff. My website, hissyfitreptiles.com. Um, here's a Mystic he sold as well. He didn't eat his rat. Good job, Mystic. Now I need to feed it to the boa, one of them. Um, they're my garbage disposals, those boas are, but this is the, the male Mystic. Uh, he sold as well. Going to David. This is the pastel clown. As you can see, he's about ready to go into shed. His eyes are getting kind of getting kind of foggy. Coloration starting to darken up a little bit. Uh, just an awesome pastel clown, though. I can't wait to put him to some of those females that you saw in there. Um, I'll probably be revealing my breeding plans here probably in the next uh, next few weeks or next month or so. I uh, got a really big um, accusation, accusation or whatever you want to call it. I, I'm acquiring a new male here soon to replace the males that I sold. So be sure to check out that in a couple days, hopefully. I should be doing an unboxing video. Here's the pastel mystic that I'm replacing the um, mystic with. This one right here uh, is the son of the Woma that you saw before. And Kyle's pastel mystic was the one that bred her, and this is what I'm holding back from that clutch. Um, Kyle's holding back a mystic female and then the Woma combo the Woma combo stuff uh, Garrick Demeyer is probably taking and we might be left with a couple um, there's one possibly two just regular Womas in there uh, we're not quite sure yet we're gonna be taking the stuff down to the Tinley show to kinda see if anybody knows uh, exactly what what they are because we we might have a pastel mystic woma we're not quite sure uh, we've gotten a lot a lot of uh, mixed reactions and reviews or whatever input on that and then some people think it's just a mystic woma some people think it's a pastel woma I think if it's one or the other it's gonna be a pastel woma but it'd be nice if that mystic was in there but uh, regardless of whatever it is um, Garrick Demeyer is probably gonna be taking that one. And then if one of the other Womas is actually a Mystic Woma, uh, he'll probably take that one as well. So um, so the, pretty much the whole clutch is spoken for. And then here's the Heck Clowns that I hatched from that Mojave to Reduce Pattern Clown Clutch. Um, they are all sold. Just got to get some meals in them. So this is uh, one of the females. She's, she's going to Dan. Here's the other female going to Billy. This male is going to Dan. And this male is going to Billy. So, um, yep. I'll probably flip flop them around so you guys can have them next to each other and stuff. But otherwise, this is the hatching rack. Um, Garrick Demeyer sold his hatchling racks to replace them with the Freedom Breeder ones. That's where this came from. So you get a lot of people asking me where I got these uh, hatchling racks from. So uh, I have one other one that I am not really using. So, um, but yeah, this holds about 77, 80 some um, hatchlings. I have to finish washing the rest of the tubs, put them in there. So um, yeah, that's my uh, my room and stuff, you guys. Um, my bedding stuff, here I try to keep all my aspen bedding, my scale, my table, this is my work table, whatever you want to call it, and, um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to 
contact me or whatever, email me, Doug at hissyfitreptiles.com. And thanks for uh, checking out my room. Hope you guys enjoyed.